Farak, being a jujutsu sorcerer, you had to be trained for anything. Although interrogation wasn't often one of the lessons that you got. More or less, interrogation from a man that wasn't all that intimidating, at least not in the traditional sense. From Masahiro Tanaka, he was different. A soldier of fortune, yes, but for Mr. Takanaka, he was far from the rough and rugged soldier who had lost everything. He seemed rather jovial with Rock as they went on and on about his experiences back in Japan, trying to find a kindred spirit in a way. But for Rock, he didn't really see it in that light. For Masahiro, he was hoping that if both he and Rock could connect on a deeper level, then maybe they could come to an understanding. Perhaps things didn't have to get too violent. After all, while he was a soldier, he did believe in some form of decorum, diplomacy, all while wielding one of the most powerful cursed tools in the world. And for Rock, he still couldn't believe that he had gotten his hands on it. I know, I know, Masahiro would say. You probably have a lot of questions on your mind. Like this, for example. Well, it was pretty hard to find. But we were able to track down its whereabouts. So what are you saying? The Toshi Fushi girl. He was a part of Hydra? No, no, not at all. Mr. Fushiguro never really cared for Hydra in the least. He was a freelance worker. He went wherever the job paid well and to whoever was hiring. No, Mr. Fushiguro was never an official member of Hydra. He was just a man who Hydra could outsource to from time to time. But we didn't hire him for that little stunt with the girl, the star plasma vessel child or whoever it was. No, that wasn't us. That was another organization. But we were able to get word about how things didn't turn out too well. But we had some leads and we were able to get a hold of this, among other things. Mr. Fushiguro supplied us with a lot of information. As such, we came to learn a lot about you jujutsu sorcerers. A lot about what makes you who you are. Once we learned that, it was simply a matter of getting a hold of some of you. We learned how your grade system worked. We found a couple of low-level sorcerers who, after some convincing, were willing to tell us everything. You kidnapped them. You tortured them. And I'm guessing you didn't let them live. We tried. Seriously, we tried. But somehow, they always ended up taking their own lives. It was messy, really. There was no need for it to go this way. We just want information and shut up. Shut the hell up. I can see that I've struck a nerve. Strucker, uh, why don't you and the guys give us some space? What? Ibraha would say. Why? Interrogation is supposed to be done in group. Yeah, I know, I know. But seriously, just trust me on this. We'll all be better off if you just allow me to work it out. We need to find the documents. Three of the carriers were fakes. It has to be him. Wherever they have hidden him. We do not have any time to delay before the CIA gets involved. Don't you think I know what the boys in blue are going to be up to? Trust me, everything will be fine. <sighs> Do not fail, Masahiro. I leave it to you, comrade.
struck, I would say. Once the room was clear and it was just Rock and Masahiro, Masahiro would stand as he placed the inverted spear of heaven to his side. I have no doubt that if it actually came to a fight, you'd probably win. Although I like to think that this old man's strength could give you a run for your money. And with this here tool by my side, perhaps I'd have a way of taking you down. Though, I really don't want to chance it. Even if you weren't a part of Hydra, we know who you really are, Masahiro Takenaka, Rock would say. We know about your exploits, the things that you've done. You're infamous in Japan and the world. Huh. I'll tell you, kid. You shouldn't always believe what you read in the history books and newspapers. So what, do you deny it? No, I don't deny it. But it doesn't always paint the full story now. Even the truth can be a lie when it's spun the right way. What do you mean? What I mean is, kid, probably shouldn't call you kid, You're a grown man. I have lived a life where I've had to do things. Things that didn't let me sleep so well at night, but I did it because I believed. I gambled everything on that belief. Fighting for the cause. Fighting for something bigger than myself. Because of that, it's what's led me all down different roads, different walks of life. It's what's led me here. Same for you. I'm truly sorry about what you've had to endure, the things that you've had to fight against. I can tell it's truly not easy, not at all. What do you know about me? I know for one thing, a child shouldn't have to fight in a war to stop the portal from hell to opening. How's that for a start? I know that a child shouldn't have to come home one day to see his parents butchered and killed savagely by forces out of his hand. I know that a child shouldn't be conscripted to fight in a war against paranormal spirits and curses. How about that? It's not like you're trying to stop it. Why should I? I'm sorry that you have to go through it, but in the end, we all know that the war is a necessary one. You and I are both soldiers, just in different ways. I fought to protect life. What do you fight for? I fight for the cause, any cause. You think I originally got involved with Hydra? No. What Hydra is today and what it used to be are two totally different things. What Hydra is now is a lot more inclusive. They're just a ragtag team of misfits all around the world gathered together fighting for who knows what. Everyone here has their own beliefs, the things that they're willing to lay their lives on the line to protect. You think I actually agree with stuff that the Red Skull spoke about? Trust me, I have better things to do than worry about a new world order. Then why do it? Because for men like us, the war never stops. The war is always ongoing. That's just in our nature. Rock. It's who we are. I'm a soldier, same as you. We fight in a war that the world will never see and know about. We take on the burdens for people who will never know our names, for people who will never thank us. It's just an endless cycle over and over again. But we fight because it means our existence. We fight. Because it means we're alive. 
The day we lose what's worth fighting for is the day that it's all over. Everything. And I can't allow myself to go out like that, Rock. I'm just not built that way. So what now? I don't have the documents. I know you don't. And I know you're not lying. But you're far from a regular civilian. I can give you time to think. But in the end, we are going to have to get answers from you. This is nothing personal, Rock. Nothing at all. I don't hate you. If anything, I admire you. You take the road that's less traveled. I see a lot of myself in you and we're not alike. Oh, we're not. Then tell me, why do you run around with a bunch of pirates, murderers, thieves, killers, people who get involved in a lot of unsavory things? What? You think just because you kill some spirits that it absolves you of the sins that you've committed? Just by being in association with these pirates. Your soul is as damned as mine. In the end, what are we really, Rock? We're just tools, instruments in this world of evil. Evil that fights against evil. A fire that consumes itself. That's all we are, and that's all we'll ever be. You choose your side, and I choose mine. But I don't think there has to be hatred between us. So, how long did it take you to come up with that little speech? Or do you rehearse it for all of your hostages? That's what you think of me, huh? Let me tell you a story, Rock. There was a man. A man who believed that He was on a mission, a God-given mission. He wanted to save his people, so he went out to them. From meeting with royalty to meeting with the common folk. From moving to the highest of hills to the lowest of valleys. A man that traveled across the seas. A man that traveled across the rugged terrain. A man that slept in the heat. A man that slept in the cold. A man who fought through trial and tribulation to preach. He preached to all that would listen. He preached to the wealthy. He preached to the poor. He preached to the educated and uneducated, to man, woman, and child, regardless of race, ethnicity, background. He continued to preach. But his ministry bore him little fruit. And yet he continued He continued to preach all his days until finally there was a boy, a boy that walked up to this preacher and he asked him, sir, why do you continue to preach when no one will listen to you? And the preacher said, I preach because it validates my existence, why I am on this earth. For you and I, Rock, we are nothing but soldiers. Why do we fight? Because it validates our existence. You had it all. You were a part of a society that could give you the keys to having power beyond your wildest dreams. And you fought the fine fight. And unlike your other associates, you survived for as long as you have. You have survived in a world that kills people like you at a young age. But you gave it up. Ultimately, you couldn't find any satisfaction. You wondered what was the point. So you tried to become civilized. You tried to become like an ordinary man. But soon you found that even in that world, there were wolves that ate the sheep. You found in that world... That only the powerful could survive. To climb the corporate ladder it was no different than that of a warrior climbing the ranks. 
you've come to realize that no matter what side you're on, you're always on the losing side. And through your trials and tribulations, it brought you all the way to the South China Sea. It brought you to Rwandapur. It brought you to a place where scum and criminals gather together and feast in a cesspool of evil. And yet you stew in that evil. You try to walk this line, Rock. This line between the black and the white, the light and the dark. You exist in that silver lining. And you, oh Rock, you're, you're the dangerous type of soldier. Because you're a living contradiction of himself. A man that tries to stick to a moral code, but you associate with those that have none. A man that believes that any little good that he does wipes out all the evil that you inflict. There's no salvation for men like us. In the end, one way or another, you and I, to whatever God you pray to, whatever deity that you speak to, even if you believe in one at all, Someday, there will be someone that we will have to answer to for our sins. And when that time comes, the only thing we can do is look back on our lives and hope that we live them with no regret. So for me, I will continue to fight. Because in the end, if I don't, then what's everything I've been through? If I stop fighting, if I lose the will to fight then what was the purpose of all of it? My sacrifices mean nothing, Rock. And I'm sorry, but I just can't live like that. I know you understand me better than anyone. So think about it, would ya? Don't make this any harder than it has to be. You can still walk away from all of this. Choice is yours, after all. Masahiro would leave Rock to stew and think about what he said. Ibraha was now becoming more and more impatient. Stroker, ever stoic as he was, even in his old age, he had lived through the glory days of Hydra. To see what it had become now, this was their last effort. If this failed, who knew what the next move would be? As the current state of the world knew, Hydra was in limbo. There were smaller factions, different parts of Hydra that had split off and done their own things, tried and failed time and time again. You could say that they were just the latest ones to make an attempt, but Hydra was a shell of its former self. It was dying, and no matter what they did, they couldn't seem to revive it. That flame was going out in the torrential downpour. And this was the last chance to stoke that fire. As for Revy, she had help from the unlikeliest of allies, that being in the form of Xinhua, otherwise known as Lady Deathstrike, along with Leherch, although to some he was known as the Banshee. For Xinhua and for Leherch, they were what you might call special humans. Humans who had been experimented on. How it happened, what caused their change in ability, you'll never know. But there was a term for them. They were called mutants. For Xinhua, she had the ability of growing her nails into long, razor-like talons. That were as strong as steel. Normally she preferred to use her machetes. As a way of luring her opponents into a false sense of security. The talons were a last resort. But a favorite one. As for Leherch. He had had his voice box ripped out. Put back in. Ripped out once more. Until finally he gained the ability to launch a supersonic scream with his mouth. Although... It also caused him splitting headaches after time, so that's why he drunk away the pain, and that's why he often used a lot of weed. It was the only way to keep him sane.
In a speeding buggy, they would go storming into the camp where Rock was being kept. As the soldiers heard the commotion that was coming, Masahiro simply nodded. The cavalry had finally returned, and it looked like round two was upon them. Revy would go storming in, looking for where Rock was, and eventually finding him, strapped to a chair with ropes binding him and with these weird ceiling tags. Under normal circumstances, these tags were simply used to suppress cursed energy, but Revy, not having any, was able to bypass and free Rock. Once she had, she would kick him in the rear end for getting caught up like that, and as they made their way outside, it would be just in time as Strucker and Masahiro would be waiting for them. So, your cavalry finally came in. I had to say, it was 50-50 odds deciding whether or not they were going to actually come and save you, or if they were going to be the cold-hearted bastards that would leave you behind. And as luck would have it, they chose the former. Okay, Rock, so what's the deal? That guy with the weird-looking spear. Yeah, him and the guy with the devil claw. They're both dangerous. You need to steer clear of them. I'll take the one with the spear. Spear? It looks more like a dagger. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. I know it's a lot, but I'll need you to keep the other guy preoccupied long enough for me. Yeah, yeah, just leave it to me. In the end, I'm going to end up popping three shots in the back of his shiny bald head. Make him look like a bowling ball when I'm done. The fight would then begin as Revy would charge against Strucker, who would use the Devil's Claw to disappear, the teleportation aspect of its power, as Revy would now be standing back to back with Shinwa, the two female fighters having to engage with Baron von Strucker, while Rock would now engage with Masahiro. Thankfully for Rock, he did have some information about what the inverted Spear of Heaven was capable of. After all, he knew firsthand the last two sorcerers that fought against it, personally. As he would stand his guard, Masahiro would get into a stance as well. This was where his military background would now come into full gear, as he was capable of holding his own against Rock. Rock knew that as long as he held on to the spear, using cursed energy, while it would be effective, it wouldn't give him any distinct advantage. That spear was capable of cutting him, slicing him up, and killing him in the worst way. If there was one advantage that Rock had, it was his youth. He was able to move around a lot more quicker, a lot more nimble. With Masahiro, he had to be more careful with his movements. But thankfully, his experience fighting in the field gave him an edge. As Rock would go in for a counter-strike attempting to disarm him, Masahiro would drop the blade from one hand and into another, attempting to slash away at Rock's guts and empty out his intestines. Rock moved at the last moment, but a slash would be left on his chest. It was painful. That spear, there was no way of defending against it. Hmm. Let me guess. You probably tried to use a simple domain, huh? It would be pointless. The spear would just cut through it anyhow. That's right. So you even know about domains. Just because I don't have the fancy powers doesn't mean I can't learn about them. It's a way of staying sharp, you know? Perhaps if I was younger, I probably would have been a jujutsu sorcerer. And who knows? Maybe you and I could have been fighting on the same side. Perhaps. But we don't live in that reality now, do we? Still, you can't help but wonder. In the meantime, Shinwa and Revy would stand back to back as they fought against Strucker, as he teleported all around them. Revy going in for her shots whenever she could, only for him to move away at the last moment. Shinwa would engage in close quarters with Strucker. However, the strength that he gained from using the Devil Claw was more than enough to outmatch the both of them. 
But even with that strength, it didn't make him bulletproof. And Revy actually managed to land the shot. Although, she would regret it dearly as she suffered a knee to the gut. And then a knee to the face. She felt like her nose might have been broken in the process. As she cursed Rock under her breath. All the things she had to go through to save his dumb ass. Shinwa would go in for a strike only for Straka to disappear. And Revy would get slashed in the arm once again. Ah! Damn it, Chinglish, you dumb bitch! What? I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. He move around a lot, really. It's getting quite annoying and- Oh! Ah. <sighs> you women are quite frisky, Straka would say. Yeah, and you're a real nuisance. That hand of yours, I might have to cut it off of you. <laughs> You'll never be able to land another blow. You've been lucky up until now, but that's all you are. And eventually your luck will run out. As Rock continued his fight against Masahiro, the two fighters going back to back, Rocket landed some devastating strikes against the man. But as long as he had that spear... He was always capable of evening the odds. Yeah. Damn. You really know how to keep an old geezer on his toes. Hey, Rock. Just give up. This isn't going to go the way you think, Masahiro. It's best to just turn back now while you've got the chance. I'm afraid I haven't gotten to that point yet. I have no intentions on giving up. If I know him the way I do, his fighting style, it leads to a much more close quarters encounter, Masahiro would think. He particularly likes to strike with his fist. I have to guess he's trying to go for the knockout punch. So, as long as I keep my guard up, there's no way he'll be able to get past my defense. I really hate to do this. But if this fight keeps going, he's going to end up tiring me out. He's got the stamina, and I don't. Plus, he's got that magic working for him, and I don't have that either. All I've got is a magical dagger, and it'll only get me so far. All right, then. I'll have to go for the old feint. And when I see the opening, I'll plunge this into his neck. Before he even has a chance to know what hit him, I'll rip his head off. Masahiro would then lower his shoulders, allowing for him to play into the fact of him being tired. Rock would stand his guard, knowing that anything could happen. <sighs> he's a well-trained soldier. There's no way he's going to allow himself to get beat so easily. If I go in without thinking, it'll be it for me. No matter how powerful I make myself, no matter how much cursed energy I charge into my body, it's not going to matter if that blade connects. It'll bypass anything I can do. So what now? If I go in, he'll probably wait for my guard to be down before striking at a vital spot. I could just give him an opening and then counter, but that's also risky. Rock knew that this fight had to come to an end. He decided that he would make his own opening. If there was no way of getting past the defense, then he would just destroy it with pure offense. Rock would go charging towards Masahiro, bringing back his right arm ready to throw a devastating right hook. Masahiro would counter as he raised his left arm. The right arm of Rock would collide with the left arm of Masahiro, shattering his bones. Yep, that arm's as good as broken. But, you learn to fight through the pain. Masahiro would then grab hold of Rock's hand. As he brought back with the spear, he would attempt to charge as he plunged it right into Rock's shoulder blade. Rock would scream in pain as Masahiro would dig the blade deeper into Rock's shoulder. As Rock was being stabbed right into the ground, 
Masahiro would land a knee strike to Rock's gut. But the moment Masahiro went to pull out the blade, that was when Rock made his move. Rock would hold on to Masahiro's hand, keeping the blade inside of him as he used his one free hand and let go of Masahiro before landing a series of strikes to his rib cage. He knew that he broke at least four ribs with the consecutive punches that he threw. A punctured lung causing Masahiro to cough up blood before Rock would concentrate as much cursed energy to his forehead, solidifying it before delivering a devastating headbutt. Rock would pull the blade out of his shoulder his arm now going limp and drenched in blood. He looked over to see Revy that was about to be impaled by Von Strocker with the Devil Claw. At the last moment, Rock would throw the inverted Spear of Heaven, slicing away at Strocker's hand, severing it and causing him to fall. <laughs> what the hell? Rock? Immediately, Shinwa would kick Strocker in the face as Rock would move. Using his one good hand, he would smash down on the Devil's Claw, destroying it using his golden aura. Countering the effects of the cursed energy, he would destroy the cursed tool, the Devil's Claw. <sighs> How the hell did you destroy it? Easy. Positive, negative. I don't have time. We need to get out of here. Yeah, no shit. Come on. Rock would make sure to pick up the inverted spear of heaven. Ibraha, now screaming, incensed, all the soldiers would chase after them as they loaded themselves into the jeep. Before Lehurch would drive off, he turned around and looked out the window seeing the caravan of soldiers coming behind them. As he yelled out a belching scream, a sonic wave would be shot forth, causing most of the caravan to be destroyed. All right, that was impressive. Now drive off, Revy would yell. Immediately, Le Hirsch would put pedal to the metal, driving in a rather intoxicated stupor, as they set off for the rendezvous. Revy would be tending to Rock in the back seat. Lehurch, the getaway driver, and Shinwa taking care of what remained of the special forces. Ibraha would chase with everything he had, even once they reached the demilitarized zone. At that point, Masahiro and Strocker, both severely injured and wounded, would tell for Ibraha to call in the retreat. Unfortunately, Ibraha was so gung-ho on achieving victory, he was willing to sacrifice his men. As a result, in a way of mercy, Masahiro would shoot and kill Ibraha. I'm sorry, Strucker. We lost this fight. We have to turn back now with what we have left. I understand, comrade. It is a shame for Ibraha. He had the mighty heart of Hydra. He did. But in the end of the day, heart's not enough to win a war. Eventually, Rock, Revy, and the others would reach the rendezvous with the members of the CIA. The documents that they were looking for were safe and secure. Inside of Revy's shirt between her, well, cleavage. They were sweaty, wet, but legible. And this would have to do for now. Revy, however, wasn't really too concerned about the documents at that point. The only thing that mattered to her was Rock. They had to get him to a doctor immediately. As the members of the CIA would fly off in the helicopter, 
now that they had received what they were looking for. A speedboat would be following them in the distance. There was a man and a woman. The man dressed in black would use a harpoon, shooting it at the helicopter and dragging it down into the ocean waters. As they got closer, those who had survived the crash were attempting to escape, only to be met by a woman dressed in white and a man dressed in black. I'll be taking those. What? Hey, pal, do you know who you're... The man in black drew his sword and held it to his throat. Yeah, I know who I'm getting involved with. And I know that you don't need to have your hands on this either. With that, all the documents would be destroyed. Of course, for Cheng, it didn't really matter. He had already gotten paid. Once the documents were in the CIA's hands, that wasn't his problem. We're not going to kill you. But it'll be a while before any rescue can come out. Sorry. I know I put you in a tight bind, but this is the cost of doing business. With that, the man in black and the woman in white would drive back to the island, where what remained of Hydra, its last fighting forces, would regroup. Throughout the camp, two silent killers would emerge, picking off what remained of their fighting forces. For Masahiro and for Strocker, they were attempting their escape as well, only to be stopped by the man in black. So, our intelligence said you were nearby, but I didn't think you'd actually show up. Eh, Benny? Or should I call you the Ronin? It ends here. You, you are the one, Strucker would say. You are the one who ruined everything. I'm so sorry to rain on your parade. But Hydra ends here. The man in black and the woman in white. They killed Strucker and Masahiro along with the rest of who remained in the camp, setting it ablaze and burning everything. The woman, Yelena, Yelena Romanoff, the younger sister of Natasha Romanoff, formerly known as the Black Widow. Benny would hand Yelena a paper. In the end, He could only explain everything to her as best he could. I know that a sorry isn't going to be enough. But you should know that your sister died as a hero. Thanks to her, she helped save the world. I know that. But it doesn't change the fact that I hold you responsible. You drug her into your crusade. She laid her life on the line. She dies, her name disgraced. It's not like my name is in any better standing. I'm still a wanted criminal for everything I've done. But you didn't know. That's not an excuse. In the end, I took those missions. I did what I was told. When I found out the truth, I was sick with myself. When Natasha found out, we agreed. We would take out Hydra together at any means necessary. She laid her life on the line. So why? Why do you no longer fight? You sit behind the computer. When you're capable of far more, so much more. Because I never wanted to pick up this sword again. For all the lives that I had ruined with it. 
I thought that maybe I could do some good in the world in a non-lethal way. But in the end, I guess I can never escape it. It's always going to be a part of me. She was really fond of you. She was a friend, Benny would say. The best friend anyone could ask for. With this part of their job done, they would return to Roanapur. Yelena, a former member of the Red Room, sister to Natasha Romanoff. With no place to go, she was welcomed in by Miss Balalaka and the members of Hotel Moscow. Balalaka served in the Great Wars. She too knew a thing about serving one's country with no chance of reward for all of her sacrifice. Who do you think helped recruit it for the Red Room? After all, she was also a widow. The mother of all widows. And she took in the last one into her family. Yelena was her daughter. If not by blood, but she was her daughter where it counted. And for many, they knew that Yelena would be the next to head Hotel Moscow whenever Miss Balalaka's time came to an end. Eventually, Lagoon Company would return to Rwanapur. For Dutch, he'd never seen rock in such a beat-up state before. It had him worried. All you were supposed to do was deliver some documents. What the hell? You look like you got ran through the drain. Yeah, I don't feel so great. Rock would be taken to a doctor the best they could afford. After being stitched up and given some time to heal, Revy would watch over him. Granted, she didn't make it easy, but she still tried. Eventually, Rock would be up and moving once again although the feeling in his left shoulder would go numb from time to time. So, that inverted spear thingy, Revy would say, what are you going to do with it? I need to get it back to where it belongs. Back to Jujutsu Tech. What, your old school? We have a storage facility for stuff like this. I mean, I could keep it, but if I die for whatever reason, it'll just be lost again. Besides, it's not really my style anyway. I mean, it looks kind of badass. I mean, imagine you walking around in your suit and tie carrying that thing beside you. It'll definitely be more intimidating. Maybe. But I don't really do this job to be intimidating. Kind of goes against the whole look. Average Japanese businessman. So, you're taking it back to Japan. Well... Well, what, Revy? Well, I mean, someone has to watch after you, you dumbass. I mean, seriously. You got kidnapped by a couple of old geezers, and I had to come through and save your sorry butt. What was that? Oh, please, if it wasn't for me, you'd still be stuck in that chair right now while they were peeling your skin off with that special little inverted spear of heaven bullshit or whatever. <sighs> Are you trying to ask to come with me to Japan? No, I'm telling you that I'm going to watch your back. We are partners, after all. I don't need you dying on me. You know how upset Dutch would be and after all the trouble he's gone through to save your sorry ass? I can't just have you messing things up now. You're stuck with us whether you like it or not. Got that? Yeah, I got it. So, you want to go back to Japan, eh, Rock? I just need to turn this in, that's all. Just see some old sites, do some stuff, take care of some business. It won't be too long, I promise. Eh... It's all right. 
Work's been pretty slow anyway, and I got some business to take care of back in the States. The States? Really? Yeah, but you don't need to worry about that. You could say that I'll be taking a trip myself. Benny, you okay holding down the fort till we all get back? Yeah, yeah, no problem. The lagoon needs some updated maintenance anyhow. Let's take a two-week sabbatical. What do you say? Two weeks then. All right. We'll reconvene by then. As Benny would be working on the Black Lagoon, Dutch would find his own transportation as he had to travel far off to the west. In the meantime, for Revy and for Rock, they found themselves sitting side by side on a plane. They were heading straight back to Japan. For Rock, he hadn't been there in a while. He would be returning as a changed man. But, hopefully, perhaps for the better. As for Revy, she was going to be seeing Rock's past. What made him who he was. The type of man that she couldn't help but look at. The person she wanted to know more about. Although she'd never say it to his face, of course. By the time they arrived, as the plane would descend into the airport, Rock and Revy would set off, bundled up as it was starting to get a little cold out. Rock would take out his phone as he needed to make a call. Uh, hello? Yeah, it's me. Rock would say. I know, it's been a while. No, I quit my job. I actually, uh, decided to go freelance. Anywho, you've got my message before, right? Sure. Where do I, where can I meet you? Shibuya? Tonight? Yeah, we'll be there. So, who was that? Revy would ask. It's an old friend. The person that I'm going to be giving this weapon to. Ah, an old friend, huh? So, we gonna go sightseeing or what? Sure. I mean, there's a lot of good places you can see in Tokyo. But you'll actually see a lot more. Why is that? Because tonight, I'm gonna take you to Shibuya. Shibuya. I've heard about that place. I hear things can get a little hectic there. Well, I don't think there's anything that we really need to worry about. What? Going to Shibuya on Halloween night? Revy would say. Who knows? Maybe some spooky ghost spirits are going to come out of nowhere. Yeah. I really hope that doesn't happen. Rock and Revy would make their way into the city, unaware of what would be waiting for them in Shibuya. On October 31st, Halloween night, a night they would never forget. This concludes Black Lagoon, City of the Dead. What if Revy was the Punisher? Season 1, Part 7, the Season 1 Finale. First and foremost, like I always have to do when we get to the end of a season of a series, I want to take the time to say thank you to everyone who has been supportive of this series. Something that, if any of my older fans know, we were supposed to do this series Last year, and things happened, series got canceled, had to get remade, had to get put back out there again, but I'm really happy that I was able to finish this one this time. Really happy with how season one turned out, overall, the story arcs and everything else, as we're progressing more and more into this series. Now, I know some people will ask, you know, isn't this more of a Heroes for Hire story than a Punisher story? And technically, yes, it is. You can say that it's a little bit of both. It's a combination of Punisher and Heroes for Hire. 
and a whole lot of other stuff. After all, this is a shared universe. And I have a lot of stuff planned, you know. We're going to be coming back with season two. And all in all, how many seasons do I want this series to be? Um, I know that the manga is still ongoing, and I'm currently reading Catching Up with the Black Lagoon manga. So I want to try to incorporate some of that that happens into that series as well. I would say I would like this series to be, I ideally, I'd say maybe um, four to six seasons, if possible, since I feel like there's a lot of story you can cover, but I probably won't even do that much because this series, all of the Defender stories will be leading to one big moment in time. And for some of you who may wonder what that is, let's just say that all of the Defender series, everything that's in the Defender verse will lead to one big moment and after that moment, that's kind of where I'm going to close the chapter on doing the Defenders. But we're still a long way from getting to that point. But you can say this is just the start of it. So I thank you all for your support. Like I always say, I can't do it without you. You make the channel grow. You make the core grow. I had a lot of fun with season one. And I can't wait till next year, 2025 when we can get into seasons two and everything else involving the world of the Defender verse. But anyway, without further ado, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings, signing off, and I'll see you next time.